What's up, gang? So, iteration number two of these uh, uh, PVC Olympic lifting technical sessions. Today is going to be about the clean, and more specifically, uh, the, uh, the squat clean. Um, so, if you saw the post, the idea here is uh, when you do front squats or you do squat cleans, most of the time you're doing that uh, with, you know, a bar at the very least, but, you know, with some weight added to it. Um, and I think a lot of times our ability to own the squat position and the front rack position can be hidden uh, by having weight help us into those uh, postures or those positions. And if you look at the skill from like an unweighted standpoint, you remove the bar, you remove the weights, uh, you'll find that those positions are very difficult to get into. You know, a good example is get a piece of PVC and see if you can get into a, a proper front rack and then front squat. Uh, it's not to say that that's mandatory, but it is an opportunity to uh, improve the skill and the technique of a, of a clean uh, just by getting better ownership of those positions without the help of weight. That way, when you do have weight, you know, you're even more comfortable and uh, the, the position and movement is more robust. So with that in mind, we've got some stuff here to kind of help us improve our mobility in that position, some of the strength and posture in it, and then uh, we're going to spend some time drilling it. So very much like we did on Tuesday with the snatches, we've got a few sections where we'll go through three rounds. The first one, just mobility. We're doing uh, the squatting knee pushes. We'll do 10 on each side, uh, and then we'll hold it for 10 seconds at the end of it, each side. Uh, and then we're going to go for a 45-second prayer stretch. Then we'll go three rounds through uh, squatting head to the floor. This will probably be new to a lot of folks, but uh, something you can try out and something new uh, for building your mobility through the thoracic part of your spine and your hips, followed by some tempo front squats. That's just going to be PVC, and you'll see how challenging that is, even after being a little bit warm. Then we're going to do a little bit of a complex. We'll do five reps of shin to knees, just going from the start position up to the knees, back down. Then from the knees into the scoop, which I'll demonstrate. Then five times from a hang, clean shrug, followed by ten high hang uh, squat cleans. I didn't put hang on there, but this will come from a high hang position. And we're going to go through that circuit three times. Lastly, uh, for quality, so just like uh, on Tuesday, we're doing all 50 of these reps broken up however you need to, only counting the good ones. It's not for time. Probably best to do like three to five at a time to really get the most out of it. There's going to be a full squat clean. So coming from the shins, taking your time, coming up your leg, get a shrug, and then fall into the best position that hopefully we've developed pretty well with all the other stuff that we've done leading up to that point. If you make it through all that and you still feel like you need some weight and you have access to a barbell or some bumpers, we'll do something that you would see you know, normally in the group class. Uh, we'll go every 90 seconds times eight, three times, but each of these three cycles will be one hang power clean, one front squat, one hang power clean, one front squat, one hang power clean, one front squat. That would be the set, so you can tell it's not going to be particularly heavy because it's a lot of work. So once again, just working on some, techni uh, some technique and some speed. I think that about does it. So I'm going to go grab some PVC and a bench, and we'll flip this around and go ahead and start getting warmed up. Sun. Nice. So we'll start with just the, uh, the basic head-to-toe warm-up. Like I've mentioned before, there are lots of iterations of this. It's nothing uh, sacred. We'll change it uh, depending on what our needs are that day. But at the very basic, we're starting with some neck rolls. No. Sorry, but the video stopped. Switch directions. Then 
we're going to go for the shoulder rolls. So up, forward, down, back. Switch directions. Okay, we're going to make some arm circles. Arms are going to go in opposite directions. So my right arm will begin going forward, left arm back. Gonna have them even when they're up overhead, and then come back down even side by side. If you allow yourself to go with the rotation, so whatever arm is forward, that shoulder rotates so that you're facing forward with it. It's a lot easier to get the rhythm with this, but you'll figure out the coordination. Speaking of coordination, this is a very basic part of the new coordination challenge I issued yesterday, so we'll spend a week doing that, so if you haven't checked it out, it's worth sinking your teeth into maybe 10 minutes a day or every other day, go ahead and switch directions. Check those arms out. We're going to get the wrists, so we want to go backs of our hands in and get the fingers laced nice and tight, and then we're going to make a fist. So from here, we're going to try and get our forearms together, keep them glued, and we're just going to roll. Circles in one direction. Try and take the wrists through the largest range of motion you can. It may feel uncoordinated at first, that's okay. Switch directions. Cool. All right, let's move to some hip circles. So, just bring it around town. You can use that joke like a few times a week. I think it's reasonable. Switch directions. For as simple and kind of innocuous as this warm-up is, I feel like the body is pretty open to doing more stuff a lot easier after it. So these 10 minutes are pretty valuable. So whether it's doing these technical sessions or if you're just picking up uh, something random to do at the house, I would definitely advise you to do something like this uh, and I, I bet you get a lot more out of your training session. Okay, let's move to the knees. So we'll start by sending them in, forward, out, and back. Killer dance move. We were talking about this yesterday at the park, but if you watch your feet and your ankles and your knees, it's pretty cool to marvel that the, uh, the body can handle this uh, motion without really having to move the feet with your ankles and your knees, just accommodating quite a bit of motion going on there. So. Like I said, check it out. Appreciate the cool body that you have. Okay, now we'll go out to in. Find a range of motion here that feels good, feels safe, don't need to push it. Remember, this is just a warm up, get the body moving. Okay, let's cross the right leg in front of the left. We're just going to bounce, just like an ostrich walk, in place. So if you can touch your hands to the ground, awesome. Otherwise, off your feet or off your shins, works. 
So just try to tap into that elastic rebound. And then on your next one, hold for 10 seconds. And switch sides. Left leg goes in front of the right, and we bounce. And hold. So then, turn this so I'm not sitting in the sun, although I'm sure it's going to be chasing me as the sun goes down. We're going to get down into a squat. We're just going to bounce for about 30 seconds. So get down nice and low. Hopefully your squat challenge is coming along. I think we're on day 27. Maybe by the time this airs, it'll be 28. This should be getting to be quite an easy position for a lot of folks. Okay, we're going to combine this squat position kind of with that ostrich position in what we call the Russian baby maker. So you can put your hands on the floor, you can step on your hands, grab your shins, whatever feels comfortable. But we're going to move up into the straight leg position and then back down into the squat. Stand. Okay, so let's wake up the uh, spine and trunk a little bit. We'll get the twist, then reach, twist, then reach, round, and arch. When you twist and reach, try to get to a straight arm as straight back behind you as you can. It's amazing all the sounds you make as you go through this drill. One more. <sighs> okay, hopefully things are starting to feel pretty good. So we're going to go through all the drills that I had listed before. If you have access to your phone or like uh, the programming document, check it out to follow along, but otherwise I'll show you what it looks like. So the squatting knee push is something uh, most of you would be familiar with from the class, but I'll show you anyways. The idea is to be flat-footed. If you're unable to do it flat-footed, prop something underneath your heels, like a towel or maybe a, a, like a little piece of wood. And we're just going to lock one knee with your shoulder or elbow and try and push the other knee out. If you can get to a straight arm like this, great, but just kind of coax the knee out as far as you can do it. Ten times. And then you'll hold it for ten seconds. As far out as you can. Same thing on the other side. For 10, and then hold. The movement you're going to pair this with is a prayer stretch. So you can get a bench. You can even do this on your countertop if you follow the same idea with your upper body. Uh, you can do it on a couch. 
basically, we're looking to stretch the structures in through here, so with the lat and the tricep kind of insert, this is going to allow us to get a little bit better uh, rack position. It will also help with overhead stuff. I know that's not the focus of this uh, technique session, but it's a great drill for it. it takes time, uh, so you know, don't, don't uh, feel like it has to improve like dramatically overnight, but this drill is great for it. So what's going to happen is you're going to have your hands in like a prayer uh, position, and we're going to place your elbow, the, the backs of your elbow, on this surface. So like I said, a bench, a couch, a countertop. And then what you're going to do is pull your hips back so that your chest starts to drop to, through. And I'm going to put my head right between my, uh, my biceps. And let my chest drop down to the floor as low as I can. So you'll notice my back kind of arches. I'm trying to push my back down as far as I can. And once I've found that position, I'm going to tuck my tailbone down like towards my heels. So you notice my back goes from arched to kind of flat, and then I'm going to lower my hand so that the thumbs are hovering about an inch off of my back. You can try and breathe through your nose and stay calm, but the idea here is we're going to hang out for 45 seconds. Over time, if this gets easier, you can start to make it more challenging by moving your knees further back. You're going to hold it for 45 seconds. So once you get that, you'll go back and forth between the knee pushes, prayer stretch, total of three rounds. Let's see. Next drill is a squatting head to the floor. So this will be a nice drill for you to watch progress on. You can use your thumbs or like uh, some books or blocks on the floor to see how low you're able to get into this position. And the idea is over time, as your hip mobility, as your uh, uh, spinal mobility improve, you'll notice that you can get a little bit lower. But once again, just get yourself into a standard squat uh, position. And we're gonna be down at the bottom. I'll start here with my thumb, uh, or my fist in a thumbs up position, and my other hand on the other side. And I'm gonna try and round and touch my forehead to my thumb and then come all the way back up to a very upright position. Down, up, down, up. If you're able to go lower, like maybe a fist and a thumb, down, up, just continue with it. I'll show you from the side. So standard squat position. You're gonna put your target down, you'll settle on one fist and one thumb, go down as low as you can, then we want to try and come back up to a good upright uh, uh, kind of squat posture. If your hands come off the floor, no big deal. Down and up. You'll find that it's pretty fatiguing, especially through the uh, erectors on either side of your spine and then into your hips. But like I said, this is uh, where we're going to make a lot of progress in owning that squat position. And we're going to find out just how much or how little we own it right now. So you're going to get a piece of PVC or a broom handle or uh, some sort of stick, just no weight really whatsoever. Uh, and we're gonna do some tempo front squats. So I want you to get in to your best front rack position. Take a big breath like you would if it was a heavy squat and we're gonna go for a three second low. One, two, three, and stand. And every time I want you to have that level of focus where we take a big breath in, Hold it, and then good squat tempo as you go. Show you from the side. This is a really good drill to video for yourself. You can send it to us for feedback or just for your own analysis, and you'll be able to see where things start to fall apart. So a lot of folks will notice that, A, the rack position is just not there. So over time, through doing that uh, prayer stretch, this will start to open up a little bit. For others, you'll notice as you get closer to the floor, things start to do one of this. This is a very dramatic uh, uh, example of what could happen. 
but you'll see where the form breaks down. And as you improve that, especially in an unweighted capacity, uh, your ability to squat, your ability to clean is going to go way up. So one more time, get in the front rack, every rep, big breath. And stand. So we'll go three rounds. Ten of the squatting head to the floor, ten front squats with that tempo cycling through. It's a good amount of work. Okay, last part of the kind of three rounders. We're going to do a little uh, complex, actually going through the, the motions of doing some cleans and then finishing with some variation of it. Just like with the snatch, we want to go through the motion as if this was something weighted, same level of attention, same kind of intensity with it and you're going to take a ton of weight. Let's get set up with a hook grip. So the thumb goes down, middle finger over the nail bed, and then wrap your fingers around. And uh, we're going to hold it just outside of hips, so like a standard clean grip. I'll show you from like a, a three-quarter view. We're going to start down at the shin, so exactly where the bar would be if you had the weight on it. And all we're going to do here is practice from the shins up to your knees. So what you would be doing in the very first part of the clean. So we're watching to make sure that the hips and the shoulders are pretty much raising together. We're not throwing your hips up. We're not only raising the shoulders. Just practicing to the knees and back down. To the knees and back down. We'll do five of those. And on your fifth one, we'll stay right at the knees. So all we're going to do from here is we're going to go from this knee position, scooping into an upright Posture. So you'll notice my torso is coming upright, the bar is starting to come up uh, my thighs, and we're back down. So right above the knees, scoop, back to the knees. When you're in the top of this scoop position, you should have the potential to be able to jump. You should be kind of loaded. We don't want to finish like at the top of a deadlift. So, once again, from the knees, you're going to scoop into this position the whole time. My lats are nice and engaged. My core is uh, nice and tight. Back has that slight arch in it, so I'm using good intensity. Next up, we're going to come from the knees again. We're going to go through that scoop position, but we're going to turn it into a clean shrug. So we're going to pass right through that same position that we had played with and go into an aggressive shrug. When you do this, we want to finish with the shoulders up and the ears. You can get up onto your toes uh, if you need to, but the idea is to get some upward vertical momentum in the bar. We don't want to end with a crazy shrug back like that. Alex, Dan, if you're watching this, this is for you. We want to finish with a nice vertical path without overextending it. So from the knees, everything's tight. Scoop and shrug. We'll do five of those. So we have the shins to knees five times, knee into the scoop five times, from the knees, we'll do a shrug five times, and last off, a high hang squat clean. You're going to do ten of these. So the idea is basically almost at the top of where you finish that shrug. I want you to start here. You'll get maybe a little pop, and I want you to fall into your best catch position in a front squat. So from here, you're going to shrug, and we're going to try and catch and stand. So arms are straight, you have a little bit of a knee bend, so you have some ability to pop. You'll pop and catch it. The idea is we want to try and capture some of the mobility and some of the uh, um, posture that we developed through all the other drills and actually practice some of the catch positions. You'll also get to work on a bit of speed here, dropping quickly underneath the bar. So full cycle <clears throat> would be five of these. Shins to knees, then five, knee into the scoop, then five, hang, clean shrugs, then ten, high hang, squat cleans. You get the point. We're going to go three times through that. You can rest. Maybe like a minute to a minute and a half between each of the rounds. You'll notice that it gets your heart rate up. That's not necessarily the idea or the goal behind it, but you're going to get a workout. Final piece, when you get there, the idea is to glue it all together. 
Really good to either have a partner, maybe you go back and forth, one of you does five, the other does five to watch or video these uh, to get like some feedback from yourself or from us. But we're gonna do 50 reps here for quality. You decide if they count or not, only count the good ones. And we're just tying the whole thing together. So we come from the shins, we're gonna clear the knees, scoop, shrug. I'm gonna drop into the best squat clean that you can. Once again, we'll get set up with the shins. Clear your knees, scoop. And stand. Like I said, you pay it uh, the attention uh, that, that it warrants, and it's going to be a great workout. You're going to feel the next day where some of the weakness uh, had previously uh, laid, and you know we're, we're making progress on all those little weak links, so that when we do get back into the uh, gym and have a bar, you're going to feel a lot stronger underneath it. The final piece for anyone who does have access to a barbell and weights and has anything left in the tank, if they want to, you know, put some of this to practice, we're just going to do eight rounds every 90 seconds with a hang power clean plus a front squat for three reps every one of those intervals. So the interval will be from a hang, we're going to power clean, then we're going to front squat. Hang power clean, front squat, hang power clean, front squat. You'll do that, like I said, every 90 seconds for eight rounds. Quite a bit of work, the weight's gonna be light, your focus is just an extension of what we did before. Good posture, good speed, good technique. Um, like I said, capitalize on all that mobility that you had before. So enjoy it, if you end up doing it, let me know what you think, and uh, yeah, enjoy the uh, workout.